big y'all so i got a lot for you today i've been really busy and i'll show you some of the footage of what i've been doing the last couple days but i do want to talk about the creepiest things that have happened to me as a nomad well i've had a few but the ones that come to my mind two of them are just recent i guess that's probably why they're just uh fresh in my mind but way back when i was in reno the first year i was in reno i stayed at a truck stop and i used to go there i had three or four different places that i would sleep but one of one of the trusty places was a truck stop i think it was petro it was outside the city not too far and i was in my van <laughs> and I needed to go get something in the back. And so as soon as I walked out, there was another car parked really close to me. And he got out, but he was parked this way. So my door opened this way and his door opened this way. So we were sort of like in this little um, holding pen, you know, with the, both of the doors open. He was a younger guy and I got out. And he looked at me like, oh, oh. And I was like a taken back and I'm going, oh, hello. And um, he wanted to strike up a conversation. And I felt, I felt a little bit of danger. So I thought, well, let me amuse him. Let me see what this guy, is he okay? Because there was, it would have been hard for me to get away. So he started up conversation and I wanted to get a little bit more information about him and kind of test him out a little bit to see who he was. Well, it ended up he really did want me to go in and have coffee with him. And I said, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm busy. You know, he goes, he goes, well, um, he, he goes, well, you don't look like you're married. And I said, well, no. Um, and he goes, well, what's a beautiful, oh, Brit he goes, what a waste. A beautiful woman like you and you're not married and I thought why is that a waste what only a beautiful women must be married they must share their life with someone <laughs> you, you catch my drift I remember thinking well that is a very weird thing to say you know just because if you're beautiful or you're attractive doesn't mean you have to be married and and you're wasting your life away no that's not um it, it didn't make sense to me. Over here, we've got a, a Class A. And he's new. And what he's doing, he's got a big trailer in the back. He's got his little dog pen out like this is his campsite. And he's literally parked this way instead of this way like we are. I usually park there, but I park this way. He's taken up at least six spaces and he's brand new. Yeah, it, 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 it's irritating, but I won't even go into it. Okay, back to the creepy part. I, I actually, I, did, I didn't want to move. It, it just seemed weird. And, but I slept with my firearm right there. Yeah, I did. Loaded firearm. Yeah.
Um, I, I want that soup. Your soup of the day? Okay. Does it come with crackers or a little bread or anything like that? It comes with crackers. Okay. And I want the uh, kale tonic. Okay. And you? It's me. Alright. I will put that in right away for you. Thank you. No worry. Of course. Thank you. Fresh juice. Kale. Um, apple. Italian wedding soup. Italian wedding soup. Well, my second creepy time was just recently. I was at Walmart and I was looking at vitamins, gummies, <laughs> gummies, yeah, gummies, gummies. Let's call the whole thing off, right? Um, and it's a guy in a wheelchair, an older guy in a wheelchair. And he started, um, he asked me something about it. He goes, oh, you're looking for healthy stuff, huh? I said, well, yeah. He goes, well, what kind of exercise do you do? You know? And I said, oh, I go to the gym. He goes, he goes, well, you know what the best exercise is? Sex. And I'm like, I looked at him. I'm like, what kind of guy walks through Walmart and talks to an older lady he doesn't know, dressed nice, and he starts talking about sex to him? Where have, where have we gone, folks? Where did we all go wrong? <laughs> and I just like, I just rolled my eyes and, and I left the area. Um, he was pretty creepy. He really was creepy. And I don't know if you experienced that or not. Um, but, and I don't know if that even has to do with nomad stuff, but seriously, it creeped me out for the rest of the day. It really did. I thought it made me feel made me feel dirty. It made me feel like, why would he say that to me? Why would he say that? It made me feel, it, it did. It makes you feel bad. It really does. And yeah, I, that came to my mind. They're very, very, very creepy. So if you have creepy experiences, even when you're not a nomad, let me know about them. You know, sometimes it's good to get these things out. to do some organizing again. <laughs> it's a never ending job when you live in a minivan. When you live in a small space, you have to keep everything clean. Well, at least I do. I don't think it's any different really than living in a house. It's just that I have less things to do. I have less 
area to clean. But you know, there is a point where if it's so crowded or you're in such a small space and you have so many things that you're putting in little areas and utilizing every little area of your van or your space, that can actually get, that can be a little bit harder. Which is just one more reason why I don't like to be so crowded inside of my van. I really don't. One reason that I have a storage that I can put my things in it that I don't use every single day, you know, many times a day. And I can always just go to the storage and pick up what I need. And this is exactly what I'm going to do right now. There are things in my, this is my garage area, by the way. It's in the back of my van and I have um, it partitioned off. It's probably maybe um, 18 inches, maybe 24 inches um, wide. And I keep things back there. I keep it partitioned off. If you see that big blue um, piece of material there, that actually suctions it off. It's behind my three tall dressers. They're, they're my narrow dressers. I got them three in the back of my van. Well, anyways, what I'm doing is there's things back here in the back in my garage area that need to go to storage. There's no reason for them to be there at this point. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting the things that I want to take to the storage. I'm putting them in that white bag and just going through. I don't need a couple pairs of shoes back there. And I don't always need this great big box of like dryer sheets, things like that. I can go to storage and pick up what I need. I'm pretty close to my storage. I did, I actually researched it even before I left Flagstaff. I researched what area I wanted to be at this time, this season in Tucson. And I looked and called around to the storage places. That way, as soon as I got to Tucson, Bam! I went right to the storage unit and got rid of some of the stuff. Now I'm going to kind of clean up on the inside, the living area. Yeah, get my towels shaken out, kind of organize what's going on, take a good look. But I'll tell you, I am parked in a really special place. I know this parking lot, it's not packed, but I know that there are some people around in the area. So I don't feel like I'm totally there all by myself, but it's a great place. It's very clean and it's a great place that I can kind of pull things out and I don't have to worry about them not only not getting dirty when I put things down on the ground, but also that there's a lot of homeless people around, things like that. I feel 
relatively safe. And this is kind of a special, kind of a secret place that I, that I can park to do this. But all in all, I mean, I do keep my bear spray close by, just in case somebody homeless kind of walks up. Now here I'm kind of inspecting things. I mean, I need to redo my drawer um, decorations for the color. Something came to my mind also when I was in Santa Cruz, I spent, I, I, I was a beach bum for the summer and I used to get a good parking place. I would leave at six in the morning and I knew exactly the best spots to park where you could, if you were in your van, you could look out at the ocean, but you were close. It was, it was a really good spot. You could just walk across um, the sand to get to the ocean. It was perfect. And good spots near um, the Pacific Ocean and Santa Cruz are hard to come by, okay? So I got there at six, but there was this one guy, eventually there was this one guy, he was very, 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 very creepy. He um, would get out of his car, and I think he was, he, he was living in his car, but he was, I believe he had a mental disorder, and he would get out there and yell, and I remember he looked at me when I was in my car and he would start like chanting to me. I, it was I, like he had a demon in him or something, but that was pretty creepy. He was there for a long time. He was there day after day, day after day. And uh, that kind of creeped me out. You know, you meet creepy people out here. You really do. And I'm sure that in your, if you're living in sticks and bricks, you're going to run into creepy people too. But out here... You're out and about more, and yeah, you can really come across them. They're they're um, you have mental illness in homelessness. You have um people who can't pay rent anymore, and they think that the the world is their oyster, and they can talk to women any way they want to. They can talk to them in stores any way they want to. Yeah, um, you do have to really be careful out here. You really do. You have to be aware. You have to know who you're talking to. You have to be willing to leave when you need to leave. It's one of the reasons I like, I guess, being a nomad because I can get in my car and I can drive whenever I want to, right? Right. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah, I feel like right now I'm at a point where I really need to be washing. Um, I need a spring cleaning. It, it's time. I need to change these, redo these. I need to wipe down and sterilize everything. In here, my cup holders, everything. Yeah, everything needs to be washed and dusted. And it's a coming. It's a coming. <laughs> I was looking at um, all of the things I need to do. And I'll let you see me do them as I do them, okay? Okay, till next time, everybody, till tomorrow. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I got the book, How to Live in a Minivan. I have neck gaiters. See, gray and gray. I've got gray on. I don't have gray, gray arm gaiters on. One of the reasons I'm wearing these, well, it's warming up. It's afternoon. I really, what did I, oh, I whacked. I mean, I. it was a skin tear on, um, there's these little pieces of plastic that stick out. And I whacked it on that, yeah. So, yikes. So where this protect is, protects my arms. When I'm in here, I'm constantly, people say, why do you wear your arm gaiters? Because I'm in a small space. And sometimes I, it's easy to whack my hand and whack my arm because I'm in a small space. Okay. Okay. Thanks for watching all the way through, everybody. I love you guys. Mwah. Till tomorrow. Go to minivanlee.com. Neck gaiters. Sunglasses. Exercise tapes. Bye. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I heard somebody talking um, right outside my window. I mean, I am right close. I'm right beside them. And I'm inside my van watching all of this. It took about 10 minutes. I'm giving you the highlights. He got, he got handcuffed. 
I think he had a warrant out. I think I could kind of hear that he might they've been looking for him or something. But yeah, I was watching. And while the other guy, one of the uh, police officers, was on the phone checking out his warrant, the one, the one officer kept looking at my van. And I thought, oh no, can he see that I'm, <laughs> can he see I'm taping this whole thing? But that's what happened. And it was really close. I've never seen anything. I've never seen something like this that close. So I thought I'd share it.